Hello and welcome to this film which is about year 12 pH calculations. Um, we'll be covering something called pH and something called pOH as well even though it's not really essential. Um, and you might remember that in year 11 we dealt with nice simple whole number values of pH and the power of 10 values that you got for H plus ion concentrations as a result. In this film we'll see that in year 12 you just have to basically deal with calculations that don't involve round numbers so you can't do them in your head you need a calculator for them okay, so you need the logarithm functions on your calculator and we're also going to see how the equilibrium constant for water is related to pH calculations okay so moving on um, just reminding ourselves of what the p in pH means this means minus log to the base 10 every time you see p in chemistry this lowercase p it means minus log to the base 10 of something so if I want to find the pH a solution all I need to do is take minus log of the H plus ion concentration and similarly if I want to find the H plus ion concentration I just take the power the number 10 and raise it to the power minus pH okay I don't need to be able to figure out why these relations are the way they are I just need to be able to plug numbers into my calculator so I'm just going to highlight the two formulas that we need to be able to use okay if you've done any maths I'm sure you can figure these things out for yourself okay but anyway let's move on and look at what we mean by the equilibrium constant for water now we should remember that water is able to act as acid or base it's able to give H plus ions and it's able to take them now here's a water molecule giving an H plus ion to another it's going to turn into OH minus and the other water molecule is going to turn into H3O+, plus, which we could equally term H+. Plus. Okay. And in the process, we're forming these ions. The two water molecules are reacting with each other. So in other words, water reacts with itself and it sets up this equilibrium. Okay. Now, if I write an equilibrium constant for this, I'm going to multiply the concentrations of the products here and divide them by the concentrations of the reactants raised to the stoichiometric power okay but I'm not going to put the concentration of water there because it doesn't change because it's a liquid okay so my equilibrium constant for water ends up being the concentration of H plus remember I can just write that as H plus if I want to it's concentration of H plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus and that equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14 if we're at 25 degrees centigrade okay and we'll see later why this temperature is important okay but you should remember from the equilibrium topic that equilibrium constants change if the temperature changes and this one's no different okay now we're going to look at in these next couple of slides why this value is important and why it's important to remember this expression okay remember equilibrium constants don't change unless temperature changes so it doesn't matter how much acid or base is around this will always be true okay right so what sort of things do we have to be able to do well for acidic solutions I ought to be able to calculate the concentration of H plus ions let's say if I'm given um, a 0.5 mole per liter HCl solution okay I ought to be able to know that the concentration of H plus is 0.5 okay and then I'd be able to find the pH because that's equal to minus log base 10 of 0.5 this shouldn't really be in a square bracket but anyway and um, I should also be able to if I'm told the pH of a solution is let's say uh, 2.02 .02, then I ought to be able to find the concentration of H plus ions by simply going right well that's 10 to the minus 2.02 .02, and do these things on your calculator okay with basic solutions it's a little bit more complicated because usually we're told the concentration of the base let's say I've got one mole per liter sodium hydroxide okay now if I'm asked to find the pH of that solution I've got to go that equals minus log to the base 10 of the H plus ion concentration but I don't know the H plus ion concentration from this okay but what I can quite easily do is say that the H plus ion concentration is equal to remember this is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 
Okay, so the H plus iron concentration is simply 1 times 10 to the minus 14, or just 10 to the minus 14, over the concentration of OH minus. So once I've found the concentration of OH minus, I just divide 10 to the minus 14 by it, and I'm given the concentration of H plus. Okay, so we'll practice some of these calculations in a subsequent film. I just want to draw your attention to something here. Okay, now in water, these two concentrations are the same. Okay. So in other words, to make this product equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 in water at 25 degrees centigrade, that's going to be 10 to the minus 7, and that's going to be 10 to the minus 7. What's the pH of water at 25 degrees centigrade? Well, it's minus log of that, which is 7. So the pH is 7. Okay? And likewise we could say that the pOH is 7. Now, if I take logs of this, right, then what I would find, if I take logs of this entire thing, then pH minus log of that multiplied by this, or in other words, added to pOH, is equal to minus log of this, okay, 14. Now, this is not an expression that you have to be able to use. It's just sometimes quite a nice shortcut. If you know the pOH, if you can find minus log to the base 10 of the OH minus ion concentration, then you can easily find the pH just by subtracting the pOH from 14. Okay, but how you do these is up to you. Okay, I'd say that this way is probably a bit more fail-safe if your maths isn't all that hot. Okay? Anyway, moving on. Final thing for this film. Remember, next film is where we actually practice a few of these calculations. So don't worry if you're thinking, well, I want to see some calculations like this. You will get to see them in the next film. Just going to look at why KW is temperature dependent. Well, if you think about what this reaction involves, okay, it's H2O turning into... H plus ions and OH minus ions. And what has to happen for that reaction to take place in the forward direction? We've got to break a bond. And breaking bonds is always endothermic, which means that this reverse process is always going to be exothermic. Right? We know that this is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. If I increase the temperature of this system, Le Chatelier's principle says that the endothermic reaction will be favoured because the system will be trying to lower the temperature. So at temperatures, when the temperature is greater than 25 degrees centigrade, I'm going to make more of these than I do at 25 degrees centigrade. So the concentration of H plus is going to rise. If the concentration of H plus rises, then the pH will drop below 7. The solution hasn't suddenly become acidic because I've still got exactly the same number of those two. Okay? But the pH has dropped at higher temperatures. If I lower the temperature, Le Chatelier's principle says that the system will try to raise it by favouring the exothermic reaction. The concentrations of these ions will fall. Okay? Kw will also fall. In the process, the concentration of H plus will fall and the pH will be greater than 7. Okay? But it won't become a basic solution because both these ions are in equal concentration. Right? So something that you do have to be able to do in year 12 is you have to be able to explain the effect of temperature on the pH of neutral solutions and on the value of Kw. Okay, so when the temperature is higher than 25 degrees centigrade, Kw is greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, when the temperature is lower than 25 degrees centigrade, Kw becomes less than 1 times 10 to the minus 14. All right, so anyway, that's about it for pH and pOH. As I said, the next film is about. Um, seeing a few of these calculations as examples of how to use these principles that we've covered in this film. It may be better 
to save your questions about this film until you've watched the next one. But if you do have some pressing concerns, then please come along and ask as soon as you can.